Hey guys, it's John here. Welcome back to Pico Cosmos. I have an exciting video for you today, and it's one I've been wanting to make for over a year, but haven't been able to until now. And that's an unboxing and review of Sea Monsters. There's a good chance you've never heard of this Brian Shrimp Pet product before though, and that's because it comes all the way from Argentina. I first came across a photo of it online in 2022 and immediately tried to buy one. But getting anything shipped out of Argentina isn't particularly easy these days. Luckily a viewer of the channel, Patricio from Buenos Aires got in touch with me, and he said he could buy this one from the Argentine auction site Mercado Libre and get it sent to me here in New Zealand. So thank you for your kind generosity donating this kit to the channel Patricio, this video wouldn't have been possible without you. Sea Monsters were released by Fady in 2015, although this wasn't the first Brian Trump pet product from Argentina. In fact, an old children's magazine called Beshiken from the 70s came with Brian Trump eggs and food as a gift. The Brian Trump were named Beshikenes, and the eggs were included in a packet on the central page of the magazine, along with detailed instructions for how to hatch and raise them, while the food for the Beshikenes were packaged on a separate piece of card that also came with the magazine. And then in 2015, Sea Monsters hit the market. They originally retailed for 350 Argentine pesos, which was somewhere around 25 US dollars at the time. And while the packaging and illustrations on here are completely unique, it's the tank that what makes this kit the most interesting. It's a clear copy of the Sea Monkeys Ocean Zoo. In fact, it appears they've taken a direct mold from it and then upscaled the design to be two and a half times its original water volume. The packaging refers to this as the Monster Aquarium, which is appropriate given how large it is. They even had a TV commercial showing how the product worked, which for some reason also features a dog that looks incredibly high. I'll leave a link to it in the video description for anybody who wants to give it a watch. Now, Patricio told me that he had a lot of trouble finding one of these Sea Monsters kits in good condition, and he had to buy quite a few because it seemed that many were broken, had already been opened, or were missing pieces altogether. Luckily this one he found is in decent condition. The box packaging is quite elaborate, which is partially due to the large tank. It's taken clear inspiration from many of the Sea Monkey kits of the time, but rather than being a cuboid, the box is a trapezoidal prism shape. Up top we have the Sea Monsters logo. Coming down is a cutout showing the tank, and the other accessories which come with the set. Framing the tank are two illustrations of the Sea Monsters. I actually really like these. Anatomically, they're a good representation of what Brian Trump actually looked like, while still having a fun cartoon element to them, so I think they've done a great job here. On the left hand side are some simple three step instructions for setting up the tank. Over on the right side, it says that with sea monsters you can discover a fascinating underwater world, and that if you're patient, you can watch them grow up to 18mm. I like that they've included a photograph of a real Brian Trump here, I think it's important to communicate exactly what these animals are, just so people know what to expect and don't get the wrong idea from the illustrations. Flipping over to the back, we get some more info about what to expect from this kit and some setup instructions. I don't speak Spanish, but Google did a decent job of translating it for me. This top paragraph basically just says that with this kit, you can discover the underwater living world of sea monsters. By putting their eggs into water, they'll hatch and then grow into 18mm three-eyed flying dragons with long tails. It also mentions that it includes everything you need to hatch, breed, and observe the sea monsters in their monster 850ml tank. Down the bottom are instructions for starting the tank and feeding them, but I'll go over that in more detail soon when we set everything up. Alright, so after 8 years of waiting, I think it's about time we finally get this box open and take a look at everything inside. The packaging in here isn't held together particularly well, which is probably why Patricio said he had so much trouble finding a set that wasn't missing any pieces. Fortunately, it looks like everything in this one is still intact. First up we have an instruction booklet. It's surprisingly comprehensive. I think they've done a really good job putting it together. There's a ton of general information about the kit in here, as well as a great overview of the biology of brine shrimp that covers everything from differentiating the sexes to explaining their different methods of reproduction. There's also some basic care tips in here for oxygenating the tank, feeding the sea monsters, and encouraging algae to grow with indirect sunlight exposure, all of which are super helpful tips. Next up we have a small double-ended yellow feeding spoon. Strangely, the instructions only mention using the smaller end for feeding, so I'm unsure why there's a large spoon on the other end. Similar to the Sea Monkeys product, 
This kit also comes with three packets. The first is a water purifier, the second is the sea monster eggs, and third is the food. The back of each pouch gives more detail about how and when to use them. And here's the most interesting part of this kit, the Monster Aquarium. It only came in this blue colour, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a direct copy of an old Sea Monkeys Ocean Zoo tank design. It looks like they've somehow managed to take a mould from the Ocean Zoo and upscale it so the water volume is 2.5 times larger at 850 mils or 29 ounces. While this is definitely a bit cheeky, I have always wanted to see a larger Ocean Zoo style tank, so I'm actually really excited to try this out. The tank has the well-known magnifying bubbles on one side, and also a textured plastic substrate on the bottom, which should help with algae growth. I noticed some small scuffs on the side of the tank here. I don't know where they've come from, but for whatever reason, it seems that it was quite common for sea monsters tanks to have these markings. Coming down to the base of the tank, and you can see that it's nice and sturdy. Though interestingly, I noticed a couple of screws on the bottom here. You can remove them if you want to detach the base from the main body of the tank, but I'm just going to keep it on. The lid has four holes in the sides to encourage air circulation, which is nice to see. They look wide enough to accommodate an airline too, which will be handy for oxygenating the tank. Overall, this kit gives a great first impression, other than the obvious copying of the Sea Monkey tank design. I'm not sure if the eggs that it comes with will still hatch after sitting around in here for 8 years, but I'm going to give it my best shot, so let's get this thing set up. The first step here is to pour 850ml of distilled water into the Monster Aquarium. There's no clear fill line on here, so I'm just going to take it an inch or two from the top. The instructions say that this water shouldn't be any cooler than 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a great tip because keeping the tank in the 22 to 28 degree range is ideal for the fastest growing conditions. Next up we need to add in packet number one, the water purifier. To my eye, this sachet looks to just be aquarium salts, and it looks a little clumpy too, indicating that it may have some moisture accumulation, which isn't really a great sign, but it shouldn't affect things too much. Upon further inspection under my microscope, it seems that my initial guess was correct, it's just salt without any of the brine trump eggs, I'll go ahead and pour its entire contents into the tank. Now we're supposed to wait one full day before adding in packet number two, the sea monster eggs. But this 24 hour wait time isn't actually necessary if you're using distilled or spring water. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one into the aquarium today too. This pouch looks to contain more salts and a whole lot of brine shrimp eggs. Like a surprising amount. I'd guess more than a thousand. Probably way too many, but these eggs are 8 years old, so I'll be impressed if anything hatches at all, especially considering the salts in this pouch appear a little damp too. Next I need to dissolve all of these salt crystals, so I'm going to use a Sea Monkey Aqualish pipette to mix everything up as it's the perfect tool for the job. The instructions recommend keeping the tank on a north facing windowsill if you live in the northern hemisphere, or a south facing one for those of us south of the equator. This is to make sure your monster aquarium gets an abundance of indirect sunlight that will help to promote algae growth, but not heat up the tank too much. So this windowsill in my bedroom should be perfect. I'm going to add a small USB powered heater into this tank too, because we're approaching winter here in New Zealand, and it's already getting quite cold at night. This heater has a built in thermostat that automatically regulates the temperature to keep it at 26 degrees Celsius. Next up I'm going to use a USB powered air pump to provide my sea monsters with plenty of oxygen. I like to leave these things on 24 7 as it keeps the water in perpetual circulation which should prevent food accumulating at the bottom of the tank. The last thing I'll add is some purple grow lights to help promote algae growth because live microalgae is the best food source for brine shrimp. As always there's a link in the video description for any of you interested in getting any of these affordable accessories for your own setups at home. I'll check back in with you guys in a day or two for the next update. Hey guys, it's been one week since my initial tank set up, and I'm surprised to say that some of these old eggs have finally hatched. I checked on the monster aquarium this morning, and there's around 6 babies swimming in here. Now, considering there's well over 1000 eggs in this kit, this is an insanely low hatch rate. But given the age of these eggs, it's actually quite impressive that any hatched at all. I'm glad there were so many in here, because it means that after 8 years of sitting in this packet, we still have a few babies. Baby brine shrimp are really small, no more than a millimetre or two long during these first few days, so it's best to view them under a microscope. Here's our baby sea monster at 150 times optical zoom. This first larval stage is called a norpleus, 
and you'll notice they're quite round in shape. They should change drastically over the next few weeks as they grow though, so hopefully I can keep them alive. It's also time to feed them from packet number 3 for the first time today too, so let's open it up. The food looks quite unusual, like small orange flakes rather than a powder. It's not like any other brine shrimp food I've seen before, so it'll be interesting to see how well the sea monsters do living on it. The instructions say to feed them one full scoop using the small side of the blue feeding spoon, but to be honest, I think that's way too much for these small babies, especially since we only have six, so I'm going to only feed them a fraction of that. I'm also going to use a small pipette to try and remove some of those old eggs too. I don't know if them sitting around negatively affects the water quality, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'll give you guys another update in a few weeks from now so we can see how the sea monsters are doing. Hey guys, it's time today for the one month update and final review. Of the six babies that hatched, all of them have survived to adulthood, which I'm really happy to see. Even though we had a small hatch rate, it's still so cool that any have managed to survive at all. It's like I have my very own tank of little time travelers. Out of the six sea monsters, four of them are female and two are male, and I just noticed the first pair mating this morning. I haven't actually fed these guys a single time since the last update, because there's been so much green algae naturally growing on the bottom of the tank that it hasn't been necessary. It's turned the sea monsters a vibrant green colour too, which I think looks really nice. It's a great indication that they're eating well and are really healthy too. My experience of raising these sea monsters over the last month has been surprisingly good. I had pretty low expectations for this kit, because in some ways it can just be considered a knockoff product, but I think Fady has done a great job here overall. The included booklet is well put together with plenty of detail, and I think their sea monster illustrations are a great design. I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but this kit also came with a large plastic straw. I'm not entirely sure of its function, as it doesn't appear to be referenced anywhere in the manual or on the packaging. My best guess is that it's probably for blowing into to create some bubbles for oxygenation, so I guess it's nice that they included it, but some explanation of its function would have been appreciated. One of the main flaws of this kit though is the amount of eggs it comes with. If I had tried to hatch these guys back in 2015 when it was first released, it's likely that the thousands of baby brine shrimp would have mostly died off, so I actually got quite lucky by hatching these old eggs 8 years after they were first packaged. My favourite part of this entire kit is definitely the Monster Aquarium. Even though the design is a clear copy of the Sea Monkeys Ocean Zoo, I love that Fady made the decision to upscale it. It's nice and open, which easily allows for the accommodation of aquarium accessories, and the way the lid comes apart is really handy for the same reason. The textured substrate at the bottom of the tank has been fantastic for facilitating algae growth, which I think is the main reason I've had such good success with this kit. Of course I would prefer if this tank didn't have those unnecessary magnifying bubbles, but at least they're only on one side, so you can always just rotate the tank if you don't want them obscuring your view. I've gotten the feeling from some of the comments on my other videos that there's a strong desire in this community to see larger brine shrimp tanks, and I think it would be awesome if TransScience decided to make their own official Sea Monkeys Ocean Zoo tank in this larger size. But I want to hear from you guys. Would you buy this Sea Monsters kit if it was still made and available today? Or do you prefer the smaller size of most other brine shrimp tanks? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.